It's been a weird year. There's a lot that's changed, but in the same time, nothing has. The only year that's kind of been similar to it, I think, is probably 2005. Started off a fantastic year. We had the Great Migration. Hundreds of thousands of people coming to Azeroth, giving our economy a much needed boost. Helping thousands of people make better livings. It was fantastic. Abandonites, the Friends for Life, led by Sir Leroy Jenkins, came. The name needed work, but, you know, we accepted them. They let out a war cry. A war cry that inspired the generation. All to do battle with the Rookery Whelps. Uh, Alright, comes up. Ready, guys, Let's or... do this. Leroy Jenkins! They all also immediately died trying to beat the Rookery Whelps because they were completely underprepared and no one questioned it. That is probably on us. Oh well, I don't feel bad. It was also the year of corrupted blood. A pandemic to end all pandemics. We never saw it coming. See, it began with the discovery of Zalgrub, an ancient citadel of some kind that had become a hive of monsters. And one demon in particular, Hakar the Soul Flare. Adventurers wanted to seek out Zalgrub, see what treasures it had hidden in it. And they had to fight Hakar to get there. But Hakar let out its, its horrid curse on us. The danger of corrupted blood was it became very difficult to tell who was infected without getting close. Symptoms of the disease often included bleeding. Whether that be from the eyes, the nose, or the mouth. But you couldn't tell unless you were close to the person. And corrupted blood could spread to anyone within 10 feet of an infected person. Once it hit the towns, it was chaos. The issue of corrupted blood got worse for us when we discovered that the mages knew about it. They knew that Hakar the Soul Flare was capable of spreading this disease. It was... It was horrifying. To be fair to them, they did think they had prepared. They had created a cleansing circle. Every person who stepped in was cleansed of corrupted blood. And every person who stepped out was cleansed of corrupted blood. Cross that circle, corrupted blood could not exist on you. What they didn't know was that a car didn't use this disease on just people. He used it on animals as well. Mages hadn't considered that. And so when people had entered to battle with Hakar, with their pets, their allies in this fight, well, they were cleansed. Their animals weren't. And at first, it wasn't a big issue. Corrupted blood caused some people to suffer quite openly with blood coming out of their ears possibly 
their mouth, their nose, in some cases their eyes. It was horrifying, to say the least, but we thought it was contained. And then, of course, it got unleashed in the cities. Once corrupted blood was in the towns, people fled to rural parts of the country to seek refuge from a disease that was ravaging their cities. Once people fled the town, they thought they were safe. That was, we thought they were safe. At this point, corrupted blood was merely just a rumour. And rumours always got blown out of proportion. To be fair, I think most of us were blinded by the economic boom we got from that, especially the rural communities. In a week, my pub made more than it had in a year. I had never been so busy. But then people started getting sick. And it was... It got bad. And it got bad fast. At first we thought it was just one or two people from the town and that if they just stayed in their rooms they'd be fine and we'd be fine. But people decided they wanted to go exploring and where better to go than see the damage of corrupted blood than the towns themselves. All they did was get corrupted blood themselves and bring it back. And it just sped out of control. The very worst of people existed at this time. As folk went out of their way to actively try and infect as many people as they could, either before the disease left them or they succumbed. It was a horrifying sight. I saw the best of humanity. There were people who set up medical centres just to keep corrupted blood from spreading to others so that they could keep people who would die from this disease without help alive. It was fantastic. Hell, they set up one in my pub. These people were heroes. And yet, they will never get the full recognition they deserve. Unfortunately, with any crisis like the one we went through, it also brings out the worst in us, and I saw the worst of humanity. There were people who got corrupted blood and actively tried to infect others, who would walk upon people who didn't have this disease, who just left a medical help outpost and just descend upon them, just to get them sick again. There was nothing we could do. Most would have pointed out that our government should have helped us, and we'd agreed the government should have, but... The reality is, is that all we got, all we got, was a note. A note that asked us to voluntarily quarantine. If we felt we should, quarantine. That meant that people like myself who ran small businesses had to go to work. Because if we didn't make money, we couldn't pay the tax. If we couldn't pay the tax, then that was us. We were getting jailed. Was... What do we do with that? There was no help. Nothing. Yet, we were supposed to get through this ourselves. 
corrupted blood lasted from the 13th of September to the 8th of October. Just over three weeks. It was... the worst time of our lives. And it ended through divine intervention. Literal divine intervention. We didn't have a hold on it. No one did. And it took a God eradicating it to free us. In those three weeks, somewhere around two to two and a half million people were affected in three weeks. If I could drop the character for just a few minutes um, to end this piece, I just wanted to say that Corrupted Blood and COVID-19 do have a lot of similarities. Uh, there is a lot of similarities to how people reacted from the game and in real life, which I'm hoping I've showed through this piece. But I feel like I've got to mention that we now have a good idea what to expect for the next pandemic. And it's up to us to hold our government up to that standard. So the next time that you are voting and the next time you're all voting, please, please ask your representatives how they would handle another possible pandemic. Because it's really important that we have a government that understands how to handle this. Thank you.